Democrats in the House of Representatives are closing the shop down tonight until a week from Monday, leaving President Bush twisting slowly in a wind of his own creation. Our third story in the countdown, the FISA bill and the retroactive immunity for the telecom giants that helped Mr. Bush illegally eavesdrop on Americans will thus just sit there, unacted upon, not even a temporary extension, which the Republicans and Mr. Bush refused, despite the president's threats that if the bill was not passed by Saturday, there would be a breakdown in counterterrorism surveillance and plagues of locusts and stuff. A special comment in a moment. First, the details. House Democrats, in essence, calling the Republicans bluff. They staged a walkout at midday, did the Republicans, led by John Boehner, who in one act managed to che the cheesy political theater and managed to get out just as representatives were to vote on contempt of Congress citations against Harriet Myers and Josh Bolton. That the Republicans just happened to walk to a stand full of microphones, pure coincidence. The president had started all this with his now daily message of fear and with what apparently he saw as a threat to postpone his scheduled trip to Africa. The House should not leave Washington without passing the Senate bill. Now, I am scheduled to leave tomorrow for a long planned trip to five African nations. Moments ago, my staff informed the House leadership that I'm prepared to delay my departure and stay in Washington with them if it will help them complete their work on this critical bill. The lives of countless Americans depend on our ability to monitor terrorist communications. Having lost, he now says he's going to Africa after all. Another threat or promise unfulfilled. Now, as promised, a special comment. A part of what I will say was said here first on January 31st. Unfortunately, it is both sadder and truer now than it was then. Who's to blame, Mr. Bush also said this afternoon. Look, these folks in Congress passed a good bill late last summer. The problem is they let the bill expire. My attitude is if the bill was good enough then, why not pass the bill again? You know, like the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, or Executive Order 9066, or the Alien and Sedition Acts, or slavery. Mr. Bush, you say that our ability to track terrorist threats will be weakened, and our citizens will be in greater danger, yet you have weakened that ability. You have subjected us, your citizens, to that greater danger. This, Mr. Bush, is simple enough even for you to understand. For the moment, at least, thanks to some true patriots in the House and to your own stubbornness, you have tabled telecom immunity and the FISA Act. You, by your own terms and your own definitions, you have just sided with the terrorists. you got to have this law or we're all going to die. But practically speaking, you vetoed the law. It is bad enough, sir, that you were demanding an ex post facto law, which could still clear the AT&Ts and the Verizons from responsibility for their systematic, aggressive, and blatant collaboration with your illegal and unjustified spying on Americans under this flimsy guise of looking for any terrorists who might be stupid enough to make a collect call or send a mass email. But when you demanded it again during the State of the Union address, you wouldn't even confirm that they'd actually done anything for which they deserved to be cleared. The Congress must pass liability protection for companies believed to have assisted in the efforts to defend America. Believed. Don't you know? Don't you even have the guts Dick Cheney showed in admitting they did collaborate with you? Does this endless presidency of loopholes and even fine print extend here, too? If you believe in the seamless mutuality of government and big business, come out and say it. There is a dictionary definition, one word that describes that toxic blend. You're a fascist. Get them to print you a t-shirt with fascist on it. What else is this but fascism? Did you see Mark Klein on this newscast last November? Mark Klein was the AT&T whistleblower, the one who explained in the placid and dull terms of your local neighborhood IT desk how he personally attached all AT&T circuits, everything, carrying every one of your phone calls, every one of your emails, every bit of your web browsing into a secure room, room number 641A at the Folsom Street facility in San Francisco, where it was all copied so the government could look at it. Not some of it, not just the international part of it, certainly not just the stuff that some spy a spy both patriotic and telepathic might able to divine had been sent or spoken by or to a terrorist. Everything. Every time you looked at a naked picture, every time you bid on eBay, every time you phoned in a donation to a Democrat. My thought was, Mr. Klein told us last November, George Orwell's 1984. And here I am, forced to connect the Big Brother machine. If there's one thing we know about Big Brother, Mr. Bush, it's that he, well, you, are a liar.
This Saturday at midnight, you said today, legislation authorizing intelligence professionals to quickly and effectively monitor terrorist communications will expire. If Congress does not act by that time, our ability to find out who the terrorists are talking to, what they are saying, and what they are planning will be compromised. You said that the lives of countless Americans depend on you getting your way. This is crap. And you sling it with an audacity and a speed unrivaled even by the greatest political felons of our history. Richard Clark, you might remember him, sir. He was one of the counter-terror pros which you inherited from President Clinton before you ran the professionals out of government in favor of your unreality-based reality. Richard Clark wrote in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Let me be clear. Our ability to track and monitor terrorists overseas would not cease should the Patriot or Protect America Act rather expire. If this were true, the president would not threaten to terminate any temporary extension with his veto pen. All surveillance currently occurring would continue even after legislative provisions lapsed because authorizations issued under the act are in effect up to a full year. You are a liar, Mr. Bush. And after showing some skill at it initially, you have ceased to even be a very good liar. And your minions, like John Boehner, your Republican congressional crash dummies, who just happen to decide to walk out of Congress when a podium full of microphones await them, they should just keep walking out of Congress, and if possible, out of the country. For they, sir, and you, sir, have no place in a government of the people, by the people, for the people. A lot of you are the symbolic descendants of the despotic middle managers of some banana republic to whom freedom is an ironic brand name, a word you reach for when you want to get away with its opposite. Thus, Mr. Bush, your panoramic invasion of privacy is dressed up as protecting America. Thus, Mr. Bush, your indiscriminate domestic spying becomes the focused monitoring only of terrorist communications. Thus, Mr. Bush, what you and the telecom giants have done isn't unlawful. It's just the kind of perfectly legal, passionately patriotic thing for which you happen to need immunity. Richard Clark is on the money as usual. That the president was willing to veto this eavesdropping means there is no threat to the legitimate counter-terror efforts still underway. As Senator Kennedy reminded us in December, the president has said that American lives will be sacrificed if Congress does not change FISA. But he has also said that he will veto any FISA bill that does not grant retroactive immunity. No immunity, no FISA bill. So, if we take the president at his word, he's willing to let Americans die to protect the phone companies. And that literally cannot be. Even Mr. Bush could not overtly take a step that actually aids the terrorists. I'm not talking about ethics here. I'm talking about blame. If the president seems to be throwing the baby out with the bathwater, it means we can safely conclude there is no baby. Because if there were, sir, now that you have vetoed an extension of the eavesdropping, if some terrorist attack were to follow, you would not merely be guilty of siding with the terrorists. You would not merely be guilty of prioritizing the telecoms over the people. You would not merely be guilty of stupidity. You would not merely be guilty of treason, sir. You would be personally and eternally responsible. And if there is one thing we know about you, Mr. Bush, one thing you have proved time and time again, it is that you are never responsible. As recently ago as 2006, we spoke words like these with trepidation. The idea that even the most cynical and untrustworthy of the politicians in our history, George W. Bush, would use the literal form of terrorism against his own people was dangerous territory. It seemed to tempt fate, to heighten fear. We will not fear any longer. We will not fear the international terrorists. We will thwart them. We will not fear the recognition of the manipulation of our yearning for safety. We will call that what it is, terrorism. We will not fear identifying the vulgar hypocrites in our government. We will name them. And we will not fear George W. Bush, nor will we fear because George W. Bush wants us to fear.